I mean, phase three is like really close anyway. If I if I hiccup or like um, I don't know, I just ate food. TLDR and just ate food. But phase three will change PV content forever in season of discovery. Let's see what this is about. A few months now, and it's very likely that phase three will drop at some point in the middle of April or towards the end of it. And you're probably wondering, what will phase three entail? Well, there have been minor. I would assume it's dropping in the week of April 16th. That's going to be the time, right? Yeah, April 16th, that's it, Tuesday. It's either like, I, I think that's week, that, that week. So like April 16th, but it could even be on Thursday. Because didn't phase two come out on a Thursday? I think so, right? In which case, between April 15th and April 18th, basically, that week. I would not be surprised, but like, if it's gonna come out at that time, we need information really fast on the release date. Minor leaks and data mine information in which we can make some pretty decent educated guesses. A new raid is more or less confirmed, and a recent email survey Blizzard sent out hints that PvE content in S.O.D. could change forever. We have a lot to cover in this video, including our little drama section, and also we'll be taking a look at how the meta has totally shifted in Nomagon this week. By the way guys, if you're still kind of on the fence about purchasing the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection and made a very thorough and in-depth review, which actually took me a good 12 hours to make, this is on my second channel, I'll leave it linked in the description and in a pinned comment. In my humble opinion, I think the YouTube algorithms do me a little bit dirty on this one, so I would really appreciate the help. It's very likely that the new raid will be Sunken Temple, but what evidence do we actually have for this? Well, the data mined PTR shows that the lockout in Sunken Temple has been changed to a three-day lockout, plus its instance ID has been changed to the number 23. Before if Yeah, it's basically Sunken Temple, based on that alone, is basically confirmed to be a raid. This is something I covered in a previous video, but basically we noticed something interesting in the most recent Classic Era data mining, the Temple of a Talha Car Dungeon, aka Sunken Temple, also known as the Sunken Temple, now has a 3 day lockout. It also has a lock ID consistent with being the next raid in the game. Black Fathom Deeps, BFD, the raid from phase 1, has an ID of 21. Normerigan is 22, and now Sunken Temple is 23. This is a strong clue that the instance is being made into the next level up raid for phase 3 when we reach level 50. Exactly. Let me see here. Now, this is a clue that Sunken Temple is a raid. It doesn't have to be the raid, it could be a raid. I have like, this is my ultimate copium by the way. I think, I don't think, I hope though, kind of, that we get two raids in phase three. That might be asking a lot by the way, but imagine if we get Sunken Temple to be a 20 man raid. Or let's just say Sunken Temple is 10 man. But they also said we would be getting 20 man raids in a season of discovery. So we get another raid, like Scarlet Halls, for example, could be a raid in phase three. Karasan Crypts could be a raid in phase three. They could even like up some dungeons. Let's say we start getting, I, I think this is going to be phase four, by the way, but heroic dungeons. At some point, they have to do more than just giving us like, for example, phase two. What was phase two? Phase two was new runes, a PvP event and a brand new raid, aka Normer again. Now, if they follow the same trend, that means we're getting either a new event in Phase 3, PvP event, or they work on Strangleton Vale, we get Sunken Temple, and we get new runes. If that's all we're getting, I think people are going to get bored really quickly, so they have to add more. And I think the more they might add is having one 10-man raid and one 20-man raid. Ultimate Copium? I don't know to the number 23. Before you think I'm Jim Carrey and I'm going to get totally deranged by a strange book that I purchased in a secondhand bookshop, this is relevant, I do promise you, because BFD was number 21 and Nomagon was 22. Websites have highlighted how the player cap has been increased to 10 man, but they're technically wrong. You see, ST already had a player cap of 10, like many of the Illawarra dungeons did, and Blizzard yeah. have confirmed I was gonna say, aren't a lot of dungeons already 10 player? Because like in that same data mine blue post, they said that the lockout size of Sunken Temple had been increased to 10. 
but I think dungeons by themselves are already 10 players in Classic WoW. You could literally, even though people don't, you could do a 10-man Scarlet Halls, or why do I say Scarlet Halls? Scarlet Monastery. Whether it's library, armory, um, cathedral, whatever it is, you can do 10-man if all you want is loot. It's just you would have more people to roll against. Now, for experience, you start getting way less XP, of course, but you could do 10-man dungeons. People already have so I think that's wrong in the data mining thing, and they just thought there was 5 player, but it's actually like, the ID has always been 10, even for Sunken Temple. But the next raid will be a 20 man, so I don't think the next phase is going to have 2 raids, a 20 man and a 10 man. Okay. I personally think that's fairly unlikely. I think we're just going to get a 20 man Sunken Temple. Another detail that makes me think Sunken Temple is most likely is how Blizzard have said they wanted to draw attention to some of the more underrated instances. ST definitely fits this bill. Also, for lore reasons, it kind of very nicely ties in to the Stranglethorn PvP event. Maybe because we have, you know, empowered the Blood God Hakar by getting killed by the world boss Kadu Me Dabibubi Pupititi, we have somehow contributed to a <laughs> rise in power within Sunken Temple, therefore justifying a need for us to go in there and sort it out. Most people probably had never bothered with the secret puzzle boss in Sunken Temple. I mean, it's probably easier to stop a vegan lecturing you about processed meat than coordinating a Vanilla World of Warcraft dungeon team. Because this boss did require you to do some funky stuff with the snake statues on the balconies in a specific order to summon Atalarion, a boss with a huge health pool and a nasty knockback. There was also another secret boss, the Avatar Havakar, that needed a questline completed in order to defeat him. This was actually a fairly difficult endurance fight because you had to survive for so long against- So, assuming Sunken Temple becomes the brand new raid in Phase 3, do we think you still have to go through that questline to summon that boss? I personally don't. I think this boss is just going to be a normal boss inside the raid that everyone has to kill and it's either going to be the actual last boss or it's going to be the second to last because in my opinion the Shade of Ranicus is always the last boss even though for some reason this one is supposed to be like the last boss or something. Shade of Ranicus is the last boss, I will die on that hill man. Shade is last boss, this one is not last. If anything we even do this one before the troll boss sometimes, quite like often actually. I think. It's these waves of Hakari Bloodkeepers. It'll be interesting to see if they keep the gimmick elements to these bosses in the raid with their current pre-requirements. My theory is that in Phase 3, the STV PvP event boss will become easier to kill and drop something required to summon the Avatar of Hakar. You think so? There's also a slight indication that Heroic Dungeons or Heroic Pluses will be coming to Sod. Blizzard recently sent out one of the email surveys and it contained this question how important are heroic yeah they please rate how important each of the following features is to you in world of warcraft classic season of discovery <clears throat> now i don't know why they had to um, why do they talk about titan rune and heroic plus dungeons in this one because like first of all we don't even have heroic dungeons it seems like, to me, and this is me copium, but also me trying to dissect this uh, message, I think they were trying to like find out this for you know, a cataclysm or something. Because we literally, once again, don't even have heroic dungeons in Season of Discovery. So like, how important is Titan Rune slash Heroic Plus dungeons? Extremely not important, because we don't even have Heroic Plus. We don't have heroics. Like, what question is this? To me, that's a that this is a weird way of trying to ask for um, heroic dungeons. If they wanted us to give our feedback on heroic dungeons, then just ask that, not Titan Rune and Heroic Plus. Because if we're going to get Titan Rune and Heroic Plus, we have to get heroic first. So we're stepping up two difficulties instead of just one. It feels weird to me, man. This question is weird. I have a strong feeling this was just, um, it was meant for a cataclysm. I don't know. Plus, or Titan Rune Dungeons to you in Season of Discovery. They have also hinted that they are thinking about adding more difficulty modes in interviews, and I think it's very likely to be honest because it seems like the- 
I, I will say, by the way, I hope we never, ever, ever get Titan Rune Dungeons or Heroic Plus in Seasonal Discovery. Never, ever, ever, ever. Don't give us Titan Rune Dungeons, but give us Heroic Dungeons. That we can do. Like, Heroic? Good. Titan Rune? No thank you. That, that's me though, that's my take, I could be wrong on this, but for me, no thank you. I don't need to do Heroic Pluses in SOD. We already have those in Wrath, I'm doing them enough in Wrath, don't really need to do them anymore here. The raids are easy anyway. Now, Heroic Dungeons, sure. Give us like more ways to farm Prebis, because right now when you get to level 16, the way you farm Prebis is uh, you farm UBRS, LBRS, and sometimes BRD. For some classes, Stratholm and Skolo. We all have the exact same gearing path that we had since Classic WoW in 2006. We've gone through this 10 plus times. If you add heroic, uh, regular heroic dungeons, like imagine Rage Fire Chasm heroic, level 60 by the way, Dead Mines heroic, level 60, um, Shadowfang Keep heroic, level 60, just a bunch of these dungeons make them heroic for level 60 to spice up the pre raid gearing. Uh, like the pre raid gearing process. Spice that up a bit. I think that could be great. Next logical step. Providing players with more difficult 5 men content keeps us adequately challenged for our every phase release. It just makes sense. It keeps the old content fun and relevant. Although I don't think this will come next phase. I think it will come phase 4 or phase 5. There have also been a number of interesting data mining class runes in the latest PTR build. Let's well, tell us to take views of a pinch of salt, but most runes that got data mined do actually end up becoming a reality. Do not overestimate Blizzard's competency to conceal and encrypt information on future content updates on their PTRs because they, well, they have zero competency in doing this. <laughs> but anyway, let's talk about the most interesting. So, Mage have new cast ability that's called Balefire Bolt, and it is similar to Arcane Blast, but you lose spirit on every stack rather than, you know, the increased mana consumption. And then when you reach zero spirit, you actually die. Deep Freezer Molten Armor Map again added, and there's a new maneuverability buff to Blink that allows you to teleport back to the original location you casted Blink within 10 seconds of casting it, and it reset to the cooldown. New Warlock runes are Summon Felguard, Pandemic, Backdraft, Unstable Affliction, and Immolation Aura, but these were determined to be in the Phase 2 PTR, so I'm not sure whether we're going to get these ones. There's a spruce rune called Despair that hints that we might be getting crit on dots. There's also this ability called Vozone that is basically a bit similar to a Death Knight's Death and Decay. Rogue may be getting honor amongst thieves along with some new runes to increase their energy regen. Druid may be finally getting a solid AoE ability in form of Gale Winds that increases the hurricane damage and removes the cooldown. Hunters might be getting something new called Focus Fire, where they can consume a pet's frenzy stacks to increase their own ranged attack speed. Or it might be getting Taste of Blood, if you don't know, this is a proc that allows your overpower to be usable on Rentix. For Paladin, there's Purifying Power, allowing you to use Exorcism and Holy Wrath on any target, and this should be a really big buff to them. They may also get their Wrath cooldown. So, some seem reasonable, and others seem a little wacky and far-fetched, but only time will tell if any of these runes do actually make it to the release. But don't worry, I didn't forget about the spicy drama section. It seems this is a new bot hustle for Horde gold farmers, as they can't farm stockades. Instead, Horde are fishing squid in the hinterlands. This makes actually quite a lot of sense. You only need to get level 5 to get started, and you can make a decent amount of gold even now, because people are buying these in preparation for Phase 3. Plus, fishing bots are much easier to set up in comparison to full-on farming bots. The grilled squid recipe for the 10 agility food buff isn't actually learnable yet, but the reason why people can make money on this is because they are stockpiling it for phase 3 release. This will become the most desired food buff in the game. My guess also is that they are laundering their stock of the squid to account that they don't use for bots so that they don't lose their stock. But right now, I have actually been told by gold sellers that the ban climate is kind of good for botters, likely to the mass firings initiated by Microsoft. Bots are able to farm 18 hours a day for a good month without getting banned, whereas previously they were getting banned within two weeks. However, this is actually... Yep. 
That's information we shouldn't put out there, by the way, because now people want to start botting. And uh, I'm just going to come out with a take here. I don't think it's good to be showing the names of the botting programs in the video, but then again, who am I to say anything? Like, I don't know. I, I don't know about showing the names of the botting programs, though. It makes it very... It's not hard to find, by the way. It's one Google search away. But still, showing the names in the video just makes people even, like, the barrier to entry is even smaller. Some positive news on this topic for once. Many gold sellers have been telling me how many bots are actually losing their functionality. They just simply have stopped working. This leads me to believe that Blizzard are actually making an effort to introduce better anti-cheat methods or, you know, better scripting to essentially prevent these bots from working and stricter restrictions on people who make add-ons when it comes to LOA scripting, sorry, Lua scripting. Now the meta has definitely shifted. Enhancement have climbed to become the second best DPS up with the mage. And actually, if you look at higher percentiles, you'll actually see that Enhancement is actually pumping more than most other classes on most fights. Warlock, still a very strong S tier class. Hunter, Ellie and Warrior are comfortably in A tier. That's melee Hunter, by the way. For some reason, Shadow Priest absolutely fell off a cliff. And the Rep Paladin is climbing a little bit to be at the top of B tier, becoming a much more viable DPS to bring to groups. And unfortunately, Druid, just still a bit of a meh middle of the pack class right now. I still remember when people are like, here's the thing. I said this in phase one and people gave me so much shit for it. I was like, when phase two comes out, warriors are going to start off being somewhat bad. But give it three to four weeks, and I promise you they'll be asked here. Do you know what people said? Solheim, you are one dumb fucking idiot. If you think warriors will ever be asked here in phase two, you are dumb. Just stop making content. Delete your videos, delete your channel. Like, warriors will not be asked here in phase two. Not a chance. I, I don't know, man. Now let's take a little look at the top three speedruns right now for Gone. The times now, well... Those are actual YouTube comments, by the way. Someone told me to delete my videos and delete my channel for predicting Warriors to be asked here in Phase 2. I just want to, like, that. that's not me just pulling that out of thin air. That was an actual comment. At least one, maybe two. Maybe I'm just getting one person right now, one guide. But, hey, it was an actual comment. World record now is 1517. And the third spot from my guild, by the way, who shout out because this is an extremely impressive run, 1549. So when we're looking at comps, they are quite interesting. One thing that is consistent across all the runs is a warlock tank. That makes absolute sense. They do great damage and they're also great at killing the bombs on the last boss. What's interesting though is we have talked about how a Shadow Priest, for instance, is underperforming. Yet there's two Shadow Priests in the world record run. And obviously my educated guess about this is boss DPS is is important in a speed run, but there's a lot more that goes into a speed run than just boss DPS and killing bosses quick. A big part of it is obviously killing trash mobs quickly. And Shadow Priests are pretty good at doing that. This is also a very caster heavy group. Usually caster heavy group. If you just want to kill trash quickly, you bring more mages, you just living bomb everything. The reason why you have two shadow priests is that that way, as you can see, they all bring one healer. So you're one healing, you then have shadow priests and you have a boomkin. So although the shadow priests might not be topping DPS, they help out with healing a lot. Anyone who has done normal here, you know how much healing a shadow priest is doing. So these two shadow priests, they do more healing than having a second healer. So taking two Shadow Priests allows you to only one heal the entire raid and have more boss DPS at the same time, giving you faster kill times. If you want to parse, you need to have faster kill times. So in this case, you instead of having one person just healing or two people just healing, you're sacrificing a healer to get two, let's just call them 75% DPSers, while also performing as a 50% healer. Uh a little bit of a problem in speedruns because obviously of mana regeneration. 
We do have two shamans here providing shamanistic rage, which is very overpowered for speedruns. In fact, let me show you how much mana regeneration it actually provides in a run. I mean, just look at the raw gains here of mana acquired throughout the run. And a big portion of this is coming from shamanistic raid. Pretty much ensuing that horde are the dominant faction right now for speedruns. One funny thing about this run also is how DPS are actually healing more than the actual healers. Yep. It seems to me that the meta strat for speedruns currently is 1. Stack shamans for shamanistic rage. 2. Get a caster heavy group because let's be honest they are just pumping more DPS and particularly more AoE DPS on trash which is best for speedruns. And also get some DPS that can provide healing while simultaneously dealing damage. By the way guys, if you are actually looking to pass more in Nomagon, I have recently made a very in-depth boss-by-boss passing guide that is for members only. And if you subscribe to the channel, you can get a little preview of that video before you consider joining the channel as a member. But anyway, until my next video, ciao. There we go. That's the video, boys. That was pretty good. I do I do fail to see like the title here though with phase three will change PvE content for every in season of discovery. I'm just gonna say that real quick. I fail to see that. Like I don't know. Phase three to me so far seems to be um, it seems to be based on the information we have so far, one new raid, and either a brand new PvP event or working on the one we already have. That's it. That's the content and brand new runes of course. I, I don't see the massive changes for phase 3 unless we get two raids, which I personally think we do. Meta Goblin in his video says he doesn't think so. I personally think we do. I hope we do. Because phase 3 has to be kind of massive. They, they have to do something more here to um, make it exciting. It's what I personally think. They, they have to do more to make it exciting. I think phase 4 could change things forever based on getting heroic dungeons. Getting heroic dungeons in phase 4 would spice up the game so much and would make like your pre busy gearing process way different. Instead of just farming BRD and UBRS and LBRS and doing dead runs, doing like all of those things, instead of doing that over again you can now for example get a trinket that is just as good as dread or just as good as UBRS or whatever you get your trinkets from, you can get something that is the equivalent of that from doing Dead Minds Heroic, as an example. I think that could be very interesting and very very good for the game to see something different. I think a lot of classic WoW and Andes might not like that because we're making too many changes to their game, but Season of Discovery is exactly that. We're making changes, testing things out and seeing what people react positively to and seeing what people react negatively to. Just throw everything at the wall and see how people react to different things. That's the mindset that I personally have at least. Either way, good vid. Good video. Also, I, I, I realized mid through that I forgot to bring you guys along on the screen for the videos. For, for the second one, we are bringing you guys along as well.